Today we're going to take a new spin on the coil pot. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here, your art professor online, your, your digital art professor. Today's project that we're getting into is some coil design patterns. So for this, you're going to need a couple things really simple. Clay is number one. Two, you're going to need a plastic bowl to work out of. So let me grab mine. So Dollar Tree, I picked up these uh, little plastic salad bowls. I guess what they are uh, good size bowl for for the projects that we're doing uh, got a couple of these these are great to do your projects in because if they break they were only a buck you can go buy another one very easily very simply or if you have one at the house that you don't mind getting clay in and can put through the dishwasher a few times that'd be fine too now for this project a number a number of art teachers would say put the bowl in a plastic bag and put your clay in that because you definitely want something between the clay that you're putting in there and the bowl itself because of a st of really the sticking factor if the clay sticks to the bowl as the clay starts to sh to shrink uh, as it's drying out it is going to crack and you want to minimize the amount of cracks as much as possible uh, when you're doing one of these bowls the best way to deal with dealing with cracks is a making sure that the clay has enough space to breathe which means as it is in the drying processes and drying out in its stages that has space to uh, constrict or contract uh, depending on which what's going on with it so give it that room to breathe that's important number one number two the agent that I'm using in between the bowl and the clay is newspaper and we did a college tour over at we did a college tour like a year ago at Clark Atlanta University went, went in their newspaper department and there was and they were like here take some newspaper I'm like okay cool I got a project I need that for uh so using that for paper mache use it for for other projects but that was project we were using it for this one so let's start diving into the main make now I'm starting off here with my clear plastic bowl the plastic bowl I've put water into so that I can create a nice wet environment for my clay so I can ensure that it has a slow dry out process. That is key number one. Definitely want to have that slow dry out process. After that, I'm taking my newspaper. Got this on a college tour. Went down to Clark Atlanta University that got, gave me some newspapers. Thank you so much. Uh, using that for this project here, I'm, I'm hydrating the, the paper and the bowl. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can get as smooth of a surface as I possibly can. I'm not doing it just to make the newspaper wet. I'm doing it because I want to make sure that my surface has a lot of moisture in between those two sections. So ensure the, the long-term stability of the clay, giving it as much moisture as possible so it's not drying out as I'm working on it. Now, after I, I've done those two steps, now we're gonna get into the making portion. I've got a block of clay. I'm cutting it down into different pieces Pieces, different sections all I'm doing is rolling out coils as I normally would now getting into I've got other coil videos that I can show you my techniques for rolling out coils let me just give you one tip of advice is when you're rolling out a coil use that space between the uh, the knuckle area of the palm of your hand and the right here at the wrist so you're using just the palm of your hand don't really like to use my fingers because I don't know this if you can kind of see it this this finger is jacked up really bad it doesn't lay right so as i'm rolling out i'll have a dent in my coil as i'm as i'm using it um also my thumbs don't work either because if i do a thumbs up i can do like field goal thumbs up with mine i don't know if it's double joined in this or what but it, it just makes so just using the palms of your hands rolling out all those different coils and when you're rolling out these coils don't think that they have to be snakes for the whole time that's what we use in my class you don't have to use those the whole time. You can also use little balls of clay to act as filler portions or use that as another design element as we're putting the pieces in. So notice how I'm making all the pieces first. I'm making several pieces at once. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that I have enough product to start using to put in place so that I don't have to keep making a little bit, putting the piece in, making a little bit more, putting the piece in. I like to make a lot of different parts at once and then I get some stuff to choose from. Now for these pinwheels that I'm working on, I wanna make sure that those pinwheels are all the same size. So once I make one or two of them, again, making sure that those two are the same size, I'm stacking, I'm using them to stack 
back as my tracer. So all my coils are about the same thickness, which is key number one. Next thing is I wanna make sure as I'm winding that, that coil snake around, I'm getting those, those, uh, those coil elements together that I have enough clay put into that coil before I cut it apart. So putting that on there, tracing it, moving on keep on doing that as many times as i need when you're making these coil pieces make sure that you have more than you need uh notice how i'm making i'm as i'm putting the pieces in there that i'm adding them in different sections so that i know how many i need to have overall just sticking with that one piece now i've already rolled out those extra coils so i can make those the coil pieces with them but having the ropes already off to the side just makes one less step for me overall then using those ball pieces to act as a filler but also as a design element i'm using that as an entire rim level finish off those pieces make it look good and again finding little bits of clay that you can use in different forms different functions is the important thing to do now for me i went in this kind of randomly at the beginning to understand that i'm just going to do different styles i'm just going to stack this up and then i started noticing a pattern this is one of those things that i just i think it's my style at this point i love antiquity i love ancient rome ancient greece so civilizations where those were the the, the original potters, those are the people who started pottery as an art form. And I always want to give give them credit because of where where they're how they started things up. So using those designs, I'm just kind of continuing that motif for the rest of the piece. And when to actually continue that piece for the finish application that I'm doing for this design as well. Now, I don't have this piece finished yet. I'm still in the process of it. So stay tuned for my Instagram to, so that you guys can see the finished product. As soon as I get that thing glazed and fired and uploaded, I will show it to you there. I, uh, after I've got all those pieces in, start smoothing out the interior portion. Want to have the interior buttery smooth and the exterior is where I want all of my design. I'll go into that in just a second why I'm doing that. So smoothing it out, I'm using slip as well as the clay itself to smooth all those pieces together. Why am I using the slip? Because I don't want to push too much on those coil patterns and designs that I've already put in there because I want to make sure that those designs stay really clean after they come out of that bowl. Now you're going to lose some of that detail overall because you are pressing into the clay and that's smushing it more into that wall of the bowl. So you are going to lose some, but I don't want to lose more than I need to. So using slip, pushing that around, letting that kind of sit in there, firm up, and then using a metal rib in my case if you have a wooden rib i think i also use that at one point uh rubber kidney anything to smooth that clay out you want to get it nice and smooth throw a little extra slip on there why because we're giving extra moisture to slowly dry out as that piece is coming together as a piece starts to constrict you are going to get cracks now i will up front tell you when you're dealing with coils that is like number one you're going to have cracks to contend with kind of a, a, a given now there are some people out there who are exceptionally good and they don't have any cracks whatsoever and there's some teachers who will give you some other tips and tell you that you're not going to have cracks if you do x y and z i'm going to be on the other side of the fence and say that you're going to have cracks and you need to plan for that because as these pieces dry out where those welds are which is where the two pieces of clay are touching they are going to have stress fractures and it's just because of the way that the clay dries out add a little more slip in there do slip over a couple days so that as it's slowly drying out you're just kind of reinforcing those cracks so you can ensure that it is a smooth and finished piece properly done now i've got my bone dry version of my piece notice how the interior i've got it all smoothed out and i'm going and i've got my exterior piece you can still see a good amount of those designs elements in here i love these little square pieces i just kind of threw in there and just kind of smashed in i thought that those those look really cool and then i got a nice round section here at the bottom now for the interior of the piece this piece when i'm firing it with the glaze i'm going to be firing it with the glaze like this i'm only going to deeply color the outside i'm actually going to leave this edge here as raw clay reason being is because what i like to do is have this really accentuated with i'm going to do a raw umber kind of dusting on the outside to get it kind of dirty that antique age look and then use a i think i also have a teal underglaze as well that i'll put on the outside to give it that that stone ancient kind of 
look and feel to it. Now for this, I could still fire it this way, but for the first firing, especially while I'm getting it baked in, I am going to fire it upside down to ensure that all of these all of this design work that I've got out here, uh, nothing sticks to it and it comes off of the kiln shelf real easily. I could stilt this, which is putting those little uh, ceramic prongs underneath so they sit above the kiln shelf. That also works, but it's just another option that I'm just kind of weighing which way to do. Now for the interior, this is where I'm going to start doing some, some, uh, some real shiny ideas. Old ancient Greek pottery was done with a purpose. It was to tell a story. So using the interior of this, I'm going to be telling a story on the inside of this using some uh, designer liner, which is I, I make my own. Mako makes a product called Designer Liner. I have bottles, little squeeze bottles that uh, some people, you can put uh, glaze in there, you can put glue in there, and then they have a really fine tip that you put a little needle into to make sure that it, the tip doesn't clog up, that you can get these super fine lines out of. I will tell you now, if you're making your own, it's a trial and error process. It's never gonna work 100% right the whole time. The Designer Liner that Mako makes is specifically designed to go out that fine tip. It runs just perfectly so if you want to save yourself a headache i would recommend buying it i am not being sponsored by them but i've used that product enough to know that they make it better than anyone else so they they got my they got my vote for of confidence for that stuff but i like to make my own i use black glaze and i put in a raw umber pigment into it to to thicken it up so if i make my glaze extra runny and i use that pigment to kind of beef it up again that i can get relatively close but there is a agent or some some sort of chemical that the mako people put into theirs and it just it's that perfect consistency that i just don't have but those are two options for you so what i do is i will come in here and draw on this with pencil once it's been bisque fire and then using the designer liner the 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 squeeze bottle that i have with my glaze and i'll come in with my designs powder i'm going to do that for a future video because i think that doing uh glaze decoration in some form or fashion uh is an, an important thing to do all on its own. I definitely want to talk you guys through that because there is a process to what is being done. So right now I'm going to hit pause on this video and this project and let's, so let's go ahead and close out the way that we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms, get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, students that we possibly have expand knowledge to the masses. Want to educate everybody, get us all on board. Uh, smarter people is a better people. That's my opinion. So if you guys had a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. Other than that, I will see you guys next class. So until then, catch you guys later. Later, guys.